Hey guys, and welcome to Let's Play Kingdom Hearts 2. I'm Nye, trans with me, and so is Trey. Hello oh, yeah. again. And we are going to be, uh, well, accessing this computer and returning to the real world, because uh, hopefully things haven't been going too badly out there. Please send help. Nye has us locked in his basement. Access directly through my user's terminal. Yeah, I'll you, you didn't hear that. Access channel open for you. I changed the password. So uh, uh, at least send some to eat. I mean, he, we, we only have sawdust. And sawdust builds so character. I learned it from and, Calvin's dad. And what about the fresh squeezed <laughs> orphan tears? It's how we stay connected. I have nothing to do nope. with that. I don't know Those how Those aren't you got tears those. from freshly squeezed orphans. Those are tears freshly squeezed after being cried out of orphans. Why are the orphans crying? Let's just say Nye is a horrible person. I don't know how you got those because I wouldn't have given you anything to drink. So anything you get from freshly squeezed orphans is entirely on you. So we oh, just got a new what you weapon. you do in the bedroom, Nye. It's horrible and you should be ashamed. So we just got a but new you weapon. Can't feel shame. The photon debugger. Which is absolutely like useless, name. and you'll never see me use it. <laughs> but it does increase the damage done by thunder, uh, thunder spells, and thunder is the strongest spell in the game. So it's, I mean, it's a decent offhand for mages. Not even. Mm -mm. I do like well, the eight-bit thank you screen. That. It's cute. Look. Mm -hmm. Tron, that that's fantastic. Hang in there. So. But yeah, Tron gives us a dedicated line to him so that we can DTD. access the DTD and get some information. So we'll let Leon do his thing. Apparently Leon's good with computers. He'll be back soon, so don't worry. I wonder when that happened. Hey, look. Oh, no, Probably Leon. when he was lying, dying on the street after the sorceress <laughs> impaled him with a fucking shard of ice. You know, if he did spend countless months in his death throw coma thang. Well, but with time dilation and all. Did it. We're in. So you believe in that theory? Well, considering that the creator has said it's a better thing than what he wrote, yeah. Yeah, I do. Really? I, I did not know that. I yeah, something it, like that. it was freaking hilarious seeing them admit that that's actually a really good explanation for some of the wacky shit. And this, I think it's uh, Satsu? It's not Iwamoto. It's... A toy? Oh. Japanese sounding name said he likes it better than the story that he wrote. Which is funny. Can I go to this door <laughs> yet? No. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and access his computer. So Leon wants Sora down and Goofy to use the computer. Yeah, no, I what? don't know why. Hey, because these, these three time, suck okay? at using computers. Their idea of computers is pretty much... Step one, percussive maintenance. No, no, no. Step two, no, no, no. more percussive They're, maintenance. The way these guys handle computers is the way Zoolander and Hansel do it in the movie Zoolander. That's how they feel. No the files are Actually, the computer. computer doesn't know. Like, the way that they handle computers is the way they wait, handle wait, wait, ready? Like teleporting ready? into Wait, wait, wait. The genius of the game is at the computer. Progress is gonna happen. <laughs> Once again, proving that Dot, that Goofy, the smartest character in the game. <laughs> he's not. He's Go never on. been. What does formal mean? He's just, he's just kind of backwoods. He's smart though. I know, but it's like it's Goofy's always considered to be like generally like ignorant. Maybe not stupid, but what? This is how Sora handles things. He smashes it. Who's this guy? Well. I see you got things working. Wait, wait, okay, look. Look at Mickey. Oh, Come on, Mickey, go on screen. Look, see Mickey? You can actually see the edges of his ears. They're not... Good. Go see? The computer should tell you can actually see them edge know. on. They're yep. usually... Oh, I was... <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going on about this because we were talking about this off screen just now. There is a Disney rule that's been long... You know, that's been on for a long time. That anytime you see Disney on screen in any movie, any on, TV show, anything like that... Again? And usually on video games, his pro he always has to have the Disney profile. No matter what direction you see him on, his ears always have to be flat on to you. So that way he looks like the Mickey silhouette. Kingdom Hearts is one of the only times that rule is broken. Even Disney's epic Mickey did it. 
you know. So it's kind of surprising that Kingdom Hearts really 2 did otherwise. Oh, that's well, right. it's a little hard to do that in a, a, a really full free environment where he moves around like that. Apparently, in, in uh, Disney's Epic Mickey, they built an entire engine well, around it to make sure his ears were always flat to the screen no matter which way he was moving. Dedication. That doesn't require building an entire engine. But they did. That just, all you have to do to do that with ease is uh, have the ears be stationary sprites anchored to his head. Well, I'm, I'm telling you how they did it. Just that, that's, that's the fact of it. So the only way it would require an engine would be uh, with stationary sprites, you would have the problem of if he ever did a rolling maneuver, they'd still be stationary. And thus would kind of pass through him as he revolved around the axis of his ears. Exactly. <laughs> Which is So they needed thought. an engine. Okay, so we just got a really important revelation of the game while we were talking about Mickey ears. The guy that we spent the entire time in Kingdom Hearts 1 fighting was not Ansem. Nope, he was actually Alsem. Or perhaps Amsem. You see, his cousin. No. No. Uh, it turns out that Mickey's actually been trying to hunt him down for a long time because Ansem knew a lot of things about Heartless and Organization 13. I'm lost enough as it is. So Mickey's actually been trying to find him. Well, let's see. Some Mickey knows all and sees all. Who wasn't really handsome, Mickey is Google. And once again, Goofy gets the idea. Goofy is seriously Mr. Exposition in the game. Nobody is the leader of the organization. Like seriously. <laughs> he gets everything. The only one who didn't set Int as a dump stat. Yeah. Which kind of explains why Donald is such a crappy mage, too, because they are powered by Int, and... But what stat did he put it in? Yeah. Because it's it's not Strength, because he can't hit worth a damn. It's not Constitution, because he has no HP. It's definitely not Charisma. What stat well, I don't know. did he put those points in? Dexterity. He, he's easily likable. Because of you, he either put it into Dex... Your Majesty. Well, if or you've never forgot Donald... the second half of the point by system, where you, you can put take the points. Things. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, if you watch Kingdom Hearts one with uh, Donald's victory scene in the Colosseum, where he does that dance, where he does this whole really, backflip thing, there's dexterity <laughs> right there. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. he's probably a dex whore. <laughs> he intended to be a 4th edition wand mage, and thus built to that, right before the GM reminded him that they were playing Pathfinder. And he never fixed it afterwards. He was just so disconsolate that he just went, aww. And he didn't even take Forgotten Tradition to set Dex to his cast stat. For those who don't know, Forgotten Tradition is a feat. It lets you set anything as your casting stat. I'm particularly fond of using it with strength. That way I can throw fireballs by flexing my biceps at people. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Mm, look at the oil clinting on my pectorals. Watch as it charms person on Oh, wait, is this Watch the... the hypnotizing oh, this is. Jiggles. Oh, it is! Trance, it's about to happen. Oh, God, the raid and freaking Ooh, wait, gimmicks. Wait, wait, wait. The, the, the worst boss fight in the game is about to happen, the best cutscene in the game is about to happen, and the most badass fight in the game is about to happen. All of I am but the so worst very boss. Uh, I actually... Don't typically have trouble beating him, so I hopefully that. You're a fucking continue. witch, is why. That's why you're a witch. You've sold your soul. You're a witch. That's the only explanation for not having trouble. Well, the thing is, trans. You know the ep uh, trans and uh, Trey. You know the epic fight I'm talking about, right? Yep. Okay, we're, that's gonna be an episode unto itself because I'm gonna do it without reaction commands, and then I'm gonna do it with reaction commands. I'm going to redo it because I want people to actually see that both ways because it's so much more awesome if you don't use reaction commands. Okay, anyways. Uh, I don't know. Grabbing the laser dude yeah, is yeah, kind sure, sure, of sure, epic. Sure, sure. I, want that, I want that to actually be part of the, uh, screen, part of the stream. Anyways, so uh, apparently we're, we're going to get a ton of cutscenes here, but if you look, we got Heartless upon Heartless streaming into Hollow Bastion. If you remember, there were... 
just millions of them just sitting out there by the castle way out there. Uh, Leon showed it to us when we first got to Hollow Bastion. They are now attacking. And the nobodies are attacking them back. And Pete and Maleficent are now here. And she's trying to control them. And my axe! And my axe! We're never gonna and oh, my axle! And my axle? Th that feels like something that Roxas would say. <laughs> oh, he's beating people to death with a friggin' axle. Tire's still on it, too. <laughs> what? It's a well, Final Fantasy not game! Amused. Do you it, honestly think... That, you're, you're holding axle by the ankles and just... <laughs> yeah, he's beating people, people with him. Yeah! yeah. He's encouraging you, this is freaking crazy, kid, but I like it! Setting himself on fire for extra damage. Okay, so. Uh, we got a bit of combat here. Uh, I'm actually going to use Valor form for this one. So, uh, I should mention, every time we gain a new form, the level limit on the previous forms goes up. Which means that Valor form is no longer tied to the level it was, so I can start being the clever loving crap out of people and gaining level fit again, which I'm definitely going to be doing. So we'll go ahead and work on that as we fight all these guys. Uh, sometime out. Okay, the dancers are a pain in the ass. This little pink thing right here. Ooh, yeah, I remember those guys. Mm -hmm. If I die to any nobody and it's not a berserker, it's typically a dancer. I'm just going to go ahead and fight our way through here. Uh, I, I will tell you what. The, the uh, red nocturne... Yeah, red nocturnes, is that who these guys are? Um, yeah. I can't remember if that's what these ones are. But the Red Nocturnes used to be, like, they were the easiest ones in Kingdom Hearts 1. They are the hardest ones in Kingdom Hearts 2. Because of that yeah. mind laying ability. They got into the Viagra. Well, all of them did, but. Yes, exactly. Just a giant freaking Viagra pill. So large it became genetic. <laughs> Done with the battle, and you're still in battle form. Yeah, I completed the entire thing in battle form, but um, yeah, so we'll be we'll be leveling up that. I'm gonna have to level up uh, wisdom form eventually. I just hate doing it. The phrase "genetic oh, Viagra" is kind of awesome. Looks like she ran away. Well, that was pretty lame of her. So here's the uh, gold wings again. The wrong side. Turns yeah. out they actually were on Maleficent's side. We knew that already, but they kind of make it very obvious here. Sora's just in the back there. Would you guys stop talking already? We've got stuff to do. And he just walks off and leaves them. Donald's doing it too. Donald's actually tapping his foot. I love how easy uh, Sora comes to this conclusion too. Why don't you pick our side? And they're like, sure. Well, treasure's a strong motivator. It is. Who are you? Loot. It's why anyone plays, you know, games. They they want the loot. Especially Borderlands. Especially Borderlands. I need to play that more often. The entire point of the game is loot. In the words of a DK school, me like shiny. I love Donald's response to that. Does Leon have any treasure? Donald, evil grin, snicker, 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 run away. Okay, so we're going to continue moving our way out into the castle. And hey, look! More nobodies. Now this is really interesting. They do this every so often uh, in cutscenes where they they don't want to actually have us do a fight, but they want to show there's actually enemies here. Oh, by the way, check it out. Look who it is. Run away. No. It's Captain Hat. No, it's Captain Hair. <laughs> Didn't I beat the crap out of you in Kingdom Hearts 1? I'm fairly sure I'm I did. Frogs, big cherries, cherries, Peter Pan, magic cheese, bells, frogs, big cherries, Peter Pan, magic cheese, Sephiroth. Anyway. Also, have you noticed how Sephiroth now has wings coming out of his knees? Wing. No, no. Wings, plural, coming out of his legs. We don't speak about his condition, Nye. That's very rude. <laughs> I mean, I if you ever see the, if, if the camera ever pans he back a little bit towards his legs, you'll actually see it, but he, uh, no, I'm not going to show it. Yeah, wait, see, look, below then his I coat, he actually has wings coming out of his legs. Yes, he that does. The last bit of light is always the hardest. 
So I guess one winged angel no longer applies, huh? Yeah. If you did, if you guys didn't get the hint, there will be a Sephiroth fight later on in this series, which I actually find easier to, to be easier than the one Kingdom Hearts one. So we'll be doing that. I, I still never be in Kingdom Hearts one. I I could do everything else on um the uh, the so-called super hard expert mode yep. using no items and and never dying once, but I can't beat him. Uh, it. When I did it uh, in my Kingdom Hearts 1 Let's Play, I had to get the Ultima weapon, I had a ton of elixirs on me just in case, and uh, not only did it take me an hour, which it was about uh, 5 to 10 minutes to try, so it took me a lot of tries to basically relearn his pattern, but uh -huh. uh, not only did it take me that, but I also had to uh, cheese it a little bit by using an ability that turns you invincible temporarily. Sora, behind you. So uh, this is what I was talking about right here. When they want to show us that there is a combat sequence, but they don't want us to actually have to fight the combat, we see that Sora, and literally everyone, I mean every fighter, destroys every Heartless and every Nobody in exactly one hit. Unless it's one that is really, really big and therefore shouldn't be defeated in one hit anyways. But when we get to combat, it takes quite a lot of hits for us to pull that off. It's kind of weird. So we're going to go ahead and fight the dancers. I'm going to have to fight the dancers a lot in the future uh, because they do drop a very particular item that I'm going to need a lot of. Uh, dancers also uh, showcase a lot the nobody's ability to sort of ignore gravity, ignore physics in general. Yeah, because they don't have a freaking body. What are you going to physics? Mm -hmm, that's a good point. I like the way you put that. What are you going to physics? We've got the creepers here. Fortunately, they don't explode when you close them. Nope, that would be a different nobody. Actually, I was thinking a different creeper. Nah, well. A little bit of both, you know. And uh, also, I should mention, because it took me a while to figure this out on my own, and I eventually got it on uh, 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 later on in the game. We have a, our four meters currently sitting at five. The reason why that's important is that uh, Valor form and Wisdom form only take three four meters to, to start. Master form takes four and we'll eventually find one that takes five. So that's the reason why, you know, that's there. So you'll see that when I, uh, come on, stop chaining me. Uh, when I actually do eventually uh, come out of Valor form here, you'll see that my four meters should be sitting at uh, two bars. I am getting ch they're chaining this dance move on me. I am I'm basically unable to do anything right now, which is ridiculous. I'm gonna have to revert. Okay. Damn it! No, you might die. Well, if yep, I'm going to die because I cannot. I'm there. We go. Freedom! Chug a so potion. You can, see my, you can see my drive move is or my drive uh, meter is at two right now. Yeah, that's I hate dance for the exact reason because they will chain you one into another into another constantly. They're cheating cheaters who cheat while they cheat. I don't know if I'd say cheaters, but the king's in the bailey. You better head over there. Got it. So we're getting closer. I right. you know They're I douche nozzles. I completely forgot this event was uh, after the first Tron. I thought this was after Tron uh, the second visit, but uh, this is basically. The next base uh, hour of gameplay or so is some of my favorite gameplay in the entire game. I so, had bad thoughts. They, broke... they they said the king was in the Bailey, and Bailey is a is a slang term for um for bathing suit. So, see, I did I I never thought of that. Bailey for me uh Whoa. is either a last name or it's uh like a bailiff or something like that. Here we go. So look, check that out. Look at that. All them heartless. All of them. And they're attacking. Oh my. They're clustered awfully close together, <laughs> aren't they? Just, no, the, the, the other creeper? My, that's an awfully nice heartless army you have there. Shame if anything would ever happen <laughs> to it. In any situation where I see that, my wow instincts kick in, and all I can think of... Napalm! Gorfiend's Grasp, Death <laughs> and Decay, Howling Blast, Howling Blast, Howling Blast, Mass Loot, huzzah! We actually do get to see everybody fighting here, which is really cool. So you actually get to see Yuffie going in. Aerith is actually useful. She casts a heal on Yuffie. Not only that, but she distracts Sephiroth's initial cut when he chops her in half. Yeah, that too. 
Also, have you, uh, have you noticed that the Heartless is just ignoring the two of them? Here's Stitch being an absolute badass. I love Fuck that. Fuck you all, I've got guns! <laughs> Fuck you all, I have blasters. Here's the gull wings Lasers. doing their thing. The cure for everything. I love this. The gull wings reaction is, let's kick one of them off a ledge. Well, they're dinky little fucking fairies based on the crappiest little... I'm sorry, the second crappiest Final Fantasy. What's the first crappiest? Final Fantasy 14. 14. Oh. I, I oh, and here you can see, I love this one. This is actually one of yes, my favorites. This is the best. This is the, the best, best one. Can handle this many? Well, it might be tough if one more shows up. <laughs> I love that line so much. Then that'll have to be the one I take care of. Well, uh, it might be tough if one more shows up. <laughs> that'll have to be the one I take care of. What? You're fighting too? I love that line so much. They they are the best together. It's a yes. shame we don't see them more. And it's also, this is an awesome series of fights, just watching them just beat the ever-loving crap out of everything. It's brilliant how they're able to get that interplay between the two of them, and yeah. the reason that they play them off like that is that's generally what's considered to happen when the gritty, you know, darker and grimmer protagonist yeah. when you stick two of them together mean? each will try and out grim dark the other <laughs> and you end up with this also look the top I down view look at the swords just look at this final fantasy 7 <laughs> aka the battle of length and girth <laughs> yeah they have to remember it's not the size of the sword it's how you use it <laughs> and and sora has a beat on that regard so now interestingly enough Cloud Sword is not only physically possible, but is actually an excellent weapon for its purpose. Not because of its dimensions, but because of the dimensions of the planet. You see, in Final Fantasy games that had an overworld map, you may have noticed that if you went off the top of the map, you'd show back up on the bottom, not the left edge, on the right, and corner to corner. Now what this means is the world is shaped like a donut. Leon, and what a donut shaped <laughs> world does is it has a very different gravitational distribution. Everything is vastly lighter. Now all the magic stuff and the huge sizes of everything, uh, the example I'll give for this is Breath of Fire 4, the cockroaches are the size of small buses. This means, like early Earth, it is an extremely high oxygen environment. Now, why does all of this matter? High oxygen, low gravity, equals extremely dense muscle tissue, extremely light objects, and the ability to fall massive distance without so much as injuring your knee slightly, which are all hallmarks of Final Fantasy. Now that we have finished nerding out, guys, it's going to be the end of this episode. Next episode is going to, uh, well, the next two episodes are going to be basically taking care of the uh, army that we just saw, and we're going to have a blast doing it. We're going to fight one of the most obnoxious bosses in the game, have some of the best battles in the game, and generally it's going to be badass. But first I want to save because I'm not going to watch all those cutscenes again. I will see you guys next time. Ta-ta. Okie dokie. Later, viewers.